In today's video, we're going to take a quick look at uh, formation water. Now, what is formation water? Well, we're always uh, trying to find oil and gas in the subsurface, but very often you know, we actually end up finding water, or indeed water sits underneath our oil and gas accumulations. So this is uh, formation waters. Now, the database we have at the minute is largely based on the UK, the United Kingdom. So uh, lots of North Sea examples in here. We've got something in the region of uh, 984 entries, uh, about 28,000 data points. That's about, on average, about 28 data points for every entry. So lots of information about different waters. Now, I'm going to look here under data sources, and, and in here we list some of the major sources that we have used for this. And I think really for a lot of people who worked in the North Sea, this was an atlas that was put together many, many moons ago, 1994, there we go. Uh, of course, now it says it's out of print. So uh, it is available through the Jolsock of London, but uh, this database was really put together by Jeremy and uh, there I am probably a few years ago aged a bit since there, but it's mainly Jeremy's efforts that we're going to look at today. Now going back on here, we've got various tools that we can use and you can get this uh, database if, if you'd like it. Now a very quick way of demonstrating the power of Trove is to look at a, in our dashboard. And so here what we can do is we could go in and we could so, say select Norway as we select it. You can see that Norway is the only country and we don't have any depth information for this. But we have formation waters, Jurassic Age, Tertiary, Cretaceous, Triassic. We have it in formations, the Tor Formation, which is uppermost Cretaceous, Brent, Middle Jurassic, Ecofisk, again, latest Cretaceous, early Tertiary, Ula, Upper Jurassic, so on and so forth, down through the list. You can see there we have them. We've got ranges of calculated resistivity in ohm meters at uh, 60 degrees Fahrenheit. And we need to know about the electrical properties of the formation water because relatively salty waters are quite conductive, whereas hydrocarbons like oil and gas are really quite resistive. So we need to understand that contrast. So we need to understand what is the, the sort of the background, as it were, the uh, a wet reservoir full of water. You can see we have a range of things and you can see that uh, there's lots of low resistivity formation waters and the resistivity kind of does get up to over 2 ohm meters at again 60 degrees Fahrenheit. pH typically 6 to 7, obviously neutral is uh, pH of 7. So some of them are acidic, some of them are alkaline. And now you can see the depth range that we have for these uh, formation waters. So that's how we can find information using the dashboard. The, another way of doing it, of course, is to go and actually have a look at the data itself. In Trove here, we've got, uh, well, the well name or the asset, the field that it's in. We've got some information about the data, how much data we have in here. We've got so the country. We've got the reservoir formation, the um, detailed stratigraphy, the age. Um, we've also got in here the uh, salinity and parts per million in sodium chloride equivalent, which uh, is sometimes quoted. At other times, we have total dissolved solids, that's in milligrams per litre. Measured resistivity, ohm meters. Temperature, we've got um, a calculated resistivity going from uh, all the information that we have. The source of the data, whether it's from a, um, an RFT, a DST, well, we know that information. And you can see here, we have a breakout in some detail of all the ions. So if we wanted to say, look at just the formation waters where we have information on cations, I've just basically looked for everything that isn't a blank under sodium. And you can see there is a huge amount of information. And what we've got, uh, we've got, you know, the major cations, also the major anions going across the page here. In our our trove database. So total anions, total cations, specific gravity, pH. And then here we've got it in different units here. MEQ per L, a representative depth. We do have this in other databases, so we can actually um, cross match and, and fill that in with a well itself, the discovery well, the quadrant and block. And most importantly, lats and longs. Uh, so you can actually take this into your own GIS system and uh, you can actually see where the, uh, where the data is all around the North Sea. Very, very useful for 
petrophysicists in particular, and of course the active plots. Now the great thing about our active plots is that they're entirely dynamic, so if you select a subset, they will be the ones that, uh, that will get shown up in here. So you've got plots here of RW, that's the res water resistivity at 60 degrees Fahrenheit. You've got the pH and shows how it's varying with depth, uh, not really much of a, a trend in there. Formation water specific gravity with depth, hmm, arguably not, a, not a, a good trend in there. But you can see chloride, sulfide, bicarbonate, and, um, num numerous uh, cations here, cross plots of sodium, strontium. The average um, barium by, uh, by age, there you go, that's interesting. Lithium with depth, and you can certainly see there's a correlation there that it seems to be um, all the higher values are, are around about eight, uh, underneath 8,000 feet. Uh, some of these are getting up to levels that might be of, uh, of, of significant interest. And then in terms of a map, well, this isn't really much of a map, but it shows we've got a good spread of data uh, up and down the UKCS. And, uh, you know, you can just, as I say, put this into your GIS system and you could plot it or you could have it plotting up any way you wanted. So that's where we're up to. Lots and lots of information. Just thought it's, a, a, you know, a product that, um, that people may not realize that we have information for. We also started to have a look at uh, some specific areas of the world, specific project. Here's Clayton Valley here. And uh, this is um, basically looking at a an area where there's a uh, concentration of uh, lithium. Likewise, uh, we've got one here, this um, Salah de Atacama, where batteries begin in the title. So information. We, we've uh, early days for this, Crater Lake. Um, we haven't decided what we're going to, uh, whether we're going to go ahead and populate this. But if it is something that's of, uh, of value to you, um, let us do the legwork. We'll find all the data for you, uh, and you don't really, uh, you don't really have to spend your time doing it. So, it's a, a huge database. As I said at the outset, it's um, got 984 entries. There's um, uh, an average of about 28 measurements for each formation water. So by far and away, we believe the largest um, formation water atlas that uh, exists in and around the North Sea. If you would like to uh, find out more, then please do get in touch as ever. Thank you for watching. I hope you found that interesting. Please hit the like, subscribe and ring the bell. Hope to see you back on our channel before too long. Bye for now.